Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to have as my guest one of the smartest and most influential figures in the world of professional wrestling. She is not only the most intelligent woman in professional wrestling, but also in the world. She not only plays a huge role within WOW Women of Wrestling, but she also captivates the audience with her heelish and entertaining tactics inside and outside of the ring. It is my pleasure to welcome the one and only Samantha Smart. Samantha, how are you today? I'm just fine, Steve, and how are you? I'm fantastic. I really appreciate your time today. Yes, you're welcome. You're well known as the IQ superior. Tell us how you obtain such a high IQ and what kind of work do you put into maintaining such excellence? Great question. Um, you see, I have always been IQ superior. I come from a background of elite educators. So it's really just in my blood. It's in my DNA. And from a very young age, I've always set high academic goals for myself. And I've really prioritized my education just really highly. I literally have had perfect attendance since kindergarten. And this is worth mentioning because it seems humans struggle with simple things such as punctuality. Um, I could continue by saying I've received a full ride scholarship to college for a combination of grades and tennis. I played tennis in college and went undefeated as well, of course. Um, and I graduated with high honors. I've never stopped learning since, and it's an ongoing process of guiding the leaders of the future through my research of innovation and technology. So it's always worth the pressure, and it's always worth the effort, because so much and so much depend on my IQ superior. Wow. Perfect attendance, huh? Never missed a day. True. Wow. It's impressive. So another legendary figure in the world of professional wrestling that claimed he was more superior to others was Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning. Did his perfection in and out of the ring inspire you in any way, or do you feel you eclipse his perfections and accomplishments? Well, I do see the clear similarities here between myself and Mr. Perfect. I mean, WCW did recognize him as one of the best all-around competitors in the business. Um, and his coworkers have been quoted saying some very nice things about everyone checking their egos at the door because you couldn't outwork him. You couldn't outshine him. You couldn't outperform him. He was seen as the best of the best. So yes, we are similar in being superior. However, I cannot honestly say that my inspirations came from him, although that is flattering. Um, my inspirations came primarily from people outside of the ring, such as the creator of the theory of relativity, Albert Einstein, um, you know, well-faceted people like Leonardo da Vinci. What didn't he do? Artist, painter, inventor, cartographer, scientist, the embodiment of Renaissance humanism. I could go on and on, but I'm not sure how much your listeners know other than wrestlers. So maybe I'll stop there. So when did you realize that you were far superior than your peers? Well, I've always known. But if I had to pick an exact moment when this thought was actualized, I would have to say it's when Mensa recruited me to retool their testing process and criteria. That really set it in stone, so to say. It's clear you excel in every subject or field, but is there one particular subject that you enjoyed the most when you were in school? You know, it's so interesting how humans concern themselves with what their favorites are. Favorites are a human construct, but I will play along and answer your question. So I would say, say mathematics and science have resonated with me since a young age. The entire universe can be understood through numbers, math, and equations. Even science itself speaks in the language of mathematics. Maybe that's why some have called me quantum superior. I mean, even art is explained in part by mathematics. So math is important in every realm. I mean, like I said, in art, it's not always visible unless you're looking for it, but there's always symmetry, there's always geometry, and there's always measurement involved with creating anything beautiful or anything that speaks to a human mind. 
Well, you've made it clear that you um, denounce the Board of Education and their guidelines for education standards. What ideas do you have that will improve education and its guidelines? Yes, you have done your homework. It is true that the Board of Education is a farce, a bureaucratic cesspool of IQ inferiors attempting to educate. And I denounce any association, even though WOW Women of Wrestling continuously pushes this on me, this petty human system. Without getting into the particulars, I mean, AI, machine learning, and my far superior mental acuteness would need to do a complete overhaul of the system. Unlike a traditional binary system of ones and zeros, a quantum computer can be in a superposition of both zero and one at the same time, allowing it to solve problems vastly quicker than any supercomputer. We have tools like this, and yet we let a round table of Tom, Sally, Ted, and Judy decide the future of our youth's intelligence. What a joke. Well, you mentioned WOW, so let's talk a little bit about that. What sets WOW apart from other divisions of women's wrestling? Well, I mean, to me, this answer, this answer is quite obvious, but at WOW, each superhero is given a chance to fight for what they believe in. Um, that may sound simple, but there really aren't many facets of this world where someone doesn't tell you what to believe in. So who we are in the ring at WOW is true to who we are in the world outside of the ring. And this is empowering to have an atmosphere that embraces and encourages what you already are while giving you the chance to strengthen yourself and others every day. And that's why David McLean and Jeannie Buss get quoted all the time saying, changing the status quo. Because in a way, that's what we do every day. I'm curious, what kind of community outreach does WOW do that impacts lives in a positive manner? Yes, this is important. So personally, I'm helping stupid people every single day in and out just in my existence. But each superhero does help the world in their own way. For example, we have Kita Rush, who is half of the tag team Bully Busters with Steffi Slays. She opened and operates her own gym in Studio City, and it's called Team Bully Busters, where she teaches self-defense to women and children. We have Teal Piper, who volunteers at a bunny rescue. We have the Beast, who is saving lives as a firefighter. And my personal favorite, the disciplinarian, who helps students at her school. So we're, we really all contribute in our own ways, and with such a big roster, I think that that contribution leaves quite an impact. Nice. That's awesome. That's phenomenal. I did not know that. Let's talk a little about your career. What, mm -hmm. in, what inspires you to not only continue to your involvement in the ring, but to also be involved with WOW as a company? <laughs> to be involved with WOW as a company. Well, Steve, I am WOW. WOW runs only because I am gracious enough to keep its wheels in motion. And inspiration, I need not. That is an unnecessary human emotion, which I do not fall victim to. I don't need inspiration. I am here to inspire WOW and to inspire the roster and to help everyone keep running so we can improve the world in means such as we just discussed in your prior question. Fair enough. Point is well taken. What can fans expect to see out of you in the ring for the upcoming season of WOW? Well, fans can expect to see a lot in the next season. Our roster is expanding at a pretty rapid rate. Um, some have been publicly announced, which are Adriana Gambino, Chainsaw, Casey Dakota, Venomous, Angelica Dante. There are actually quite a few more, but they haven't been announced. So make no mistake, these pawns will take heed to the true ringmaster, myself. Um, but it's always good to have different tools to utilize, and this will benefit everyone, both you know, me in the roster and then the fans to be entertained and to have new superheroes to watch. Well, recently, WOW announced a live tour this year. What's the status thus far on the tour? And do you have any dates or location set that you can reveal? Well, you have come to the right person for information. I actually created a heat map for the WOW tour and I'm tracking all of the votes that people are submitting online. So it's been interesting to see which spots light up on the map. The locations are not officially set, nor are the dates, but I can say there are four to five 
very red areas on the heat map within the United States. So the tour is looking like it might need to make more stops than what we had originally uh, planned, which is really exciting. And hopefully information will be announced about that soon. Oh, that's great. That's great news. When can fans uh, expect to see the newest episode of WOW that'll air on Access TV? Um, this also has not been announced, uh, the air date or, you know, the day and time. But fans can go to wowee.com, W-O-W-E.com, and sign up for the newsletter because that newsletter will be the first place where it is announced. All of the information will go out through that outlet first. And in the meantime, we are posting past episode recaps and never before backstage, never before seen backstage interviews on our YouTube. So if anyone wants to brush up on their wow knowledge before that drops, that now's the time to do it. Well, Samantha, this is the cranium shot portion of the interview. I'm going to tell you a name or say a name to you, and you give me that first answer that pops into your head. It can be a brief answer or it can be very descriptive. Are you ready? Sure. Tessa Blanchard. (laughs) Well, anyone that follows my live tweeting would know my answer to this one. Petulant child. Amber O'Neill. Identity crisis. David McLean. Mm, crony capitalism. Jenny Buss. Free market capitalism. All right, finally, Kobe Bryant. Mm, prodigy. Yeah, and, and for those of you listening that may not know, Jenny Buss, uh, the owner of the Lakers, uh, and, and obviously the, the recent passing of Kobe Bryant was tragic. And, uh, and I'm sure that, that a lot of the, the members of the WOW family considered him family as well. Yes, very so, much so. So tell the fans how they can follow you and WOW on social media. Sure. To follow myself, Samantha Smart, on Instagram, it's WOW underscore smart. On Twitter, it's WOW underscore Sam Smart. And then following WOW superheroes is very simple because it's, while wow, superheroes, W O W S U P E R H E R O E S on every single platform that includes Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Well, Samantha, I greatly appreciate your time. I feel smarter already just by talking to you. So thank you for taking time out of your busy day <laughs> for, for talking to me and, and good luck with this season on wow. And I wish you the best on your career. All right. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that awesome interview with Samantha Smart from WOW Women of Wrestling. Make sure you go to their website at wowe.com. That's W-O-W-E.com. And also follow them on social media. Facebook, it's WOW Superheroes. And then Instagram and Twitter, at WOW Superheroes. And they also have a YouTube channel. Make sure you go subscribe to that. They are posting fun and entertaining videos all the time on their YouTube channel, so make sure you go check that out. Check out WOW this upcoming season on Access TV. You will not be disappointed. Thank you again for listening to this interview and pushing that play button no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. It's greatly appreciated. Don't forget to go follow me on social media. It's at Chair2Cranium. That's Chair, the number two, Cranium, on Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook, and make sure you go subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. And, of course, you can listen to us on all the major platforms, Apple, Google, Spotify, SoundCloud, and, again, on YouTube. Thank you very much, and as always, thank you for taking another cheer shot to the cranium. <laughs>